The Feed Bandit Podcast, Episode 6, It's Dove Season, Part 2. Howdy, and welcome back to the Feed Bandit Podcast, where our goal is to entertain while talking hunting and learning about the sport we love right alongside you. With this podcast, we also want to do what we can to support small and family-owned businesses and entrepreneurs in the hunting space wherever possible. We believe they are the lifeblood of our economy and of our communities, and hope that you agree with us about the importance of lending our support. If you if you are a small business, feed store, gear inventor, or entrepreneur in the hunting space and would like to get more exposure to potential customers by being featured on the Feed Bandit podcast, please let us know. Go to feedbandit.com forward, forward slash promote and drop us a line. We'd love to discuss what we can do for you and your business. Again, that is feedbandit.com forward slash promote. And for you fellow hunters out there, do you want special access to new and innovative hunting gear? Well, if so, we're in the process of putting together an exclusive collection of small businesses and entrepreneurs in the hunting space to bring our community the best, newest, and most innovative products available. Limited access will be granted through our email list, so be sure to join the hunt. When you join, you'll get a special gift, and that's our free ebook of unique hunting tips and tricks for both beginning and experienced hunters. So don't miss out, and be sure to join the hunt at feedbandit.com slash join. Again, that's feedbandit.com slash join. Howdy, everybody, and welcome back to the Feed Bandit podcast. I'm your host, as always, Jimmy Byrne, and joined by my always esteemed compadre, Richard Kinchlow. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, sir. I'm uh, I'm just watching a teal hunt on uh, oh, our, nice. our Instagram feed, and I'm... Uh, uh, seething with jealousy. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, along those lines, though, uh, you actually did a teal hunt this last weekend. And anyway, we're, I think today, uh, we want to talk a little more on dove hunting, but, uh, you know, how, how's it been going? Uh, you know, it, it's, it, it's been a rough season. Um, I'll just freely admit that. You know, one of the things that, that we talked about, I think, in the first episode, and, uh, I believe I wrote about as well in one of our blogs is that, you know, that just, for 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 dove hunting in the state of Texas, you know, you either hunt over water, or um, or you hunt over some sort of you know uh, grain crop, something of that nature, you know, or sunflower field that just happened to come up, you know, something of that nature. Um, you know, unfortunately, when you hunt over water and then you have a lot of water falling from the sky, it makes it really difficult. Uh, a dove would just assume drink out of a puddle as he or she would out of a gigantic tank with a panting, you know, crazy dog, uh, you know, 15 feet from it. So, um, we, it's been, it's been bittersweet. That's how I should have said it. Uh, you know, more than halfway through or about halfway through now, we, we've had a couple of decent hunts, uh, but, but just nothing like we're used to, but, but Hey, the bottom line is we're outdoors. We're having fun. And uh, we have no um, halogen light above our head, just the good old natural sunlight. So, um, <laughs> yeah, all is good. All is good. There you go. All right. Yeah, and uh, so really today, I guess, we just wanted to follow up on our last podcast. We talked about dove hunting. Um, that was actually a podcast number two. Mm-hmm. So anyone listening, it's uh, you can see it uh, in – uh, on our website, feedbandit.com slash the number two, feedbandit.com slash two. That'll get you to that podcast, or you can obviously find it on your podcast app. app. Uh, so we just wanted to, you know, uh, talk about a couple of other uh, things to know, tips, tricks, uh, just little anecdotes about uh, dove heading that could help some people out there and you know, maybe start a conversation about it with some people. So, uh, yeah, where do you want to start? Yeah, let's uh, let's start with the the tip we've got here that says uh, the shoot at what you can hit. Ah, uh, yes, always um, important. Yeah, no, it, it really is. <laughs> it, it really saves really money. <laughs> Absolutely, God, no doubt. Um, you know, one one of the things is you know when when you're dove hunting again, you're we talk about having a plan, okay? Either surrounding a field or surrounding a tank, uh, you know, something of that nature. Um, so that being said, you really want to, you really want those birds to get inside your little gauntlet of death. Um, one of the problems is, is that if you've got some birds coming in, um, and, and you're sitting there blasting away at everything, even though you, it's well out of your range, 
you're really kind of doing an injustice to your buddy uh, or buddies. So uh, one of our, our our tips here is is you know know your limits as far as your your shooting range is concerned. Um, and you know obviously if you've got a you got a bird that's outside of your range, be flying right to your buddy. You know again something that we talked about is to give your buddy a shout. Hey man, bird on your right, bird on your left. You know something of that nature. And uh, I mean, gosh, it's just it's worked countless times, and they get a shot because they're they're more within range. So um, yeah, when you don't want to be uh, <clears throat> labeled the bird hog. No, even even if you're sh- even if you don't get them, which you probably won't, you know, be, be called the bird hog because you're sh- shooting at them, and you're, no chance you'll hit them. You know? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. No, no, no doubt, no doubt. Yeah. And then you yeah. screw it for, screw it up for them. So oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, and. and you know what? Once they kind of get in the gauntlet, you're in good shape. But but you know, once they're if they're coming in and you shoot, you know they can just as easily turn around or, or peel out a different way. So, yep, don't uh, don't be a selfish dude. Right, right. Yep. All right. Uh, what's next? Did you want to talk about uh, uh, camo? Maybe yep. the nice the nice side of the bird. This this is interesting, and it's it's, it's and it's also interesting comparing it to other animals. Yep, right? because it's obviously. Well, I think a lot of people that don't hunt, you know, when they see camo, they just automatically assume, you know, well, you're hunting, you got you got to wear camo, you know, right. you're out there doing whatever. So it's it's interesting sure. that the more you, you know, people learn or whatever, it's like, oh, you, you mean I can uh, I can actually wear like a, a blaze orange depending right. on what I'm hunting? And <laughs> right, right. <laughs> you know, no, it's, it, so it's it, it it's very true. Um, you know, uh, birds, uh, from what I've, when I'm told, they all see in color and they all see extremely well. Uh, obviously that is one of their, their dominant senses. Um, a dove are, are no, are no different from, again, from what I'm told. Uh, so, you know, that said, you really want to, um, you know, you don't necessarily have to wear camouflage clothes. Uh, that would certainly help, especially if it blends in with your environment, uh, hence the, the name camouflage. Uh, but you can also wear drab clothes, okay? You know, I will typically wear some shorts from Cabela's uh, that I like. Um, uh, and then I, I typically will wear kind of a, either an olive shirt or a brown shirt, something of that nature. And then, of course, my snake boots. And, uh, and that seems to work. Uh, that seems to work very well. So... Um, yeah, obviously just avoid the real flashy colors, you know, because obviously if you've got a bird that's inbound and, you know, that particular bird has not seen you yet, but you're wearing a, a, a blue shirt and, uh, and you move, then they're probably going to flare. Um, and so it's not going to be good. So, you know, camo slash drab clothing is always a, a, a good, a good choice. Mm-hmm. Now, I know we're talking about dove, but, uh, that's part of the, the reasons why I love turkey hunting so much is that right. you know you gotta you gotta blend in because those guys they can they can really see us. So it's <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially the fact that you know spring turkey hunting, you are know, using a shotgun. You, know, you got to be within you know right twenty or thirty yards. God, it is. Whew, it, it is a rush. I love it. Right, right. Uh, what's the next thing we want to talk about today? Yeah, I think uh, I, I think really talking about the difference between a bird vest and a bird belt. Um, you know, I think uh, there's a, there's a lot of a lot of folks out there in the state of Texas that will actually use a use a bird belt. And a bird belt, just to, to let you know, basically consists of three, uh, three two pockets and a pouch. Uh, there's going to be a pocket on your left, a pocket on your right. Uh, those are going to be for your empties, uh, your empty shells, and obviously your live shells. Um, and then uh, your bird, uh, the, the pouch is going to be for the actual birds. Um, I prefer the bird belt just because, you know, again, in Texas, it's, it's very, very hot. So uh, the, the, the least amount of clothes I can have on, the better. Um, uh, also, it's convenient for me just to put my hand down my pouch and, and grab a new cartridge uh, to, uh, to reload my gun. Um, you know, the bird belt t- typically used a lot more in the upland bird hunting, so just quail and pheasant and chucker and, uh, you know, things of that nature. Um, the bird, uh, the, the bird bag rather is, um, the bird vest, excuse me, is traditionally a lot bigger, so it will hold your pheasants and, uh, you know, chuckers and things of that nature. Uh, we had some, some of our friends used, used to use bird, uh, bird vests, but, uh, they've gone away from them. I, I think another reason why they don't use them as much is, 
is when you sit down in your chair, <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna squash your dove. Uh, so <laughs> right. again, it's just kind of a matter of uh, of, um, of of you know taste and style, opinion, what you like. Mm-hmm. And I've actually gone away from either really. I <laughs> I'll use yep. uh, you know that <clears throat> the uh, Mac Daddy Caddy chair, oh. which is really nice. It has that. That uh, pocket on the side, so that's where I put my absolutely you know, my fresh new shells, yep. and then I have uh, sh- I wear shorts like you. They're camo shorts, but they yep. have they're like cargo shorts though. Absolutely. So they have the two big pockets, and yep. you know if I'm walking out to get a bird, I could put it in one of my pockets there, but I can also have some uh, shells, you know, right. in the other pocket there. So I just utilize the shorts there, so I don't really even mess with a, really a belt anymore. Although I did. Uh, before so it's you know again yeah like you say it's kind of whatever someone's preference is really yep in the end absolutely i actually end up uh, what i've been doing with my mac daddy caddy is turning is a is uh just connecting again the the belt an actual belt so i i will actually strap my belt to my caddy uh keep it on my right side so i can grab my shells really quickly um and boy it's just been it's (laughs) it's been a dream it's been great (laughs) Uh, so here's another one that kind of goes back to what we're talking about camo. I don't think we mentioned this last time and, uh, not not to throw you off, but, uh, it's a tip that we've titled, uh, don't move. He can't see us if we don't move. You know, that quote from Jurassic Park about the, uh, the the T-Rex, right? Which Uh, actually is not true. Uh, (laughs) I actually, I actually saw a deal on that. And of course, after I read, I'm like, man, that totally makes sense. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> How the hell do they know this? Right. right. I have yet to see a live Tyrannosaurus Rex. And, and if, even if there was, trying to get close to him to ask him about his, uh, you know, his, his sensing of movement would be nearly impossible. Yeah, I would you can't see me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, so I guess, though, with dove hunting, you know, it's just important to kind of, because they do have such good eyesight, as you're saying. Right. You know, just don't don't be uh, dancing a jig while you're uh, hunting. You know, it's just no uh, doubt, no <laughs> doubt. Yeah, and, and and so it's really important to to be as still as humanly possible. Uh, that being said, though, you've got to be constantly constantly scanning. Now, this is a good one. I'm glad you brought it up. Um, and, and I'll tell you, you know, one of the things that we like about the the Mac Daddy Caddy is the fact that it does have the the swiveling. You know, so you can gently swivel left. And you can gently swivel right. Uh, and one of the things that I've started doing, I've, I've been doing since I was a kid, my, my father taught me, is, you know, use your, just kind of use your body to look, okay? You don't have to jerk your head around real quick. I mean, it's the same principle of sitting in a deer stand. You know, you need to be real delicate. Let your eyes turn before your head. And I know that seems kind of crazy, but, but it's true, you know? Um, the, the stiller you are, the more successful you're going to be. Um, so a- absolutely. Be be still. Okay. Uh, so the next uh, another kind of interesting movie quote. See see if anyone knows what this is. Uh, there are many like it, but this one is mine. Yeah, so. <laughs> great movie. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, your uh, your gun is your life, right? It really is. It really is. Yeah, and and, and you know you 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 want to keep it clean. Uh, you know, a dirty gun, a fouled gun, um, apparently doesn't, doesn't shoot very well. <laughs> um, I say apparently because I'm pretty religious about, about keeping mine, uh, you know, keeping mine clean. You know, a gun is a tool. Okay. It's an expensive tool, but it's a tool. Uh, so you, you've got to, you really got to keep it clean. Uh, you know, people ask me, you know, when I've had a, you know, do, do I clean? Uh, I shoot a over and under brownie 20 gauge. Uh, they asked me, do, do, do you clean your gun after every hunt? And the answer is no. Um, I do not clean my gun after every hunt. Uh, what I will do, though, is I get a silicone rag and spray a little rim oil on it and, and wipe down all the metal pieces. Uh, obviously, because it's had sweat on it, probably blood, but, but even worse is my fingerprints. And the oil from my hands can really screw up a gun. So... Um, wipe it down, wipe down all the metal pieces after every hunt. Uh, you know, use a little bit more rim oil, especially if you're, um, if it's been, if it's been raining. Okay. 
Uh, but yeah, and then, then finally, you know, when you, when you put it up, don't put it back in the case immediately. Keep it out. Let it air out. You know, let it, let it cool down. Um, but yeah, take care of it and it'll take care of you. I've been, I've been shooting this over and under that I'm shooting right now since probably July of 2000. Well, I got it in July of 2009. I don't know how I remember that. And boy, it's just been a, it's just been a killer. Uh, so I, I really, really enjoy it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And, uh, and also just transporting, transporting it to and from, you know, after it's cooled down or even getting out to the field. I mean, you, uh, this seems like common sense, but sometimes people don't do this, you know, no. <laughs> put in a gun case, you know, let it <laughs> protect it from bouncing around or whatever, you know, just and keep the dirt out of it or whatever else. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, um, it, it's, it's kind of funny, you know, uh, you know, back in the back last year. Okay. And before that, you know, we'd have to load up the pickup with our buckets and all that kind of junk. I mean, we just, boy, the whole entire back of the truck was filled with a couple of guys gear. Of course, now that we have the Mag Daddy Caddy, that's not such a big problem. Uh, you <laughs> and I just move our caddies to the corner and we're in great shape. And that's then we right. Have our, um, our, 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 our shotguns in there. But no, I, I think it's very important that, that you protect your gun, okay? And, um, you know, you, you, God, you never know. Dogs, if you have a dog in the back, it'll be stepping on your gun, you know, something. Well, it'll be driving down the dirt roads all the oh, way to get out big, there, all that, absolutely. all that dust and everything, you know? Absolutely. Yep. Keep it in the case. Keep it protected. Um, I've seen guys who just throw their gun in the back. I'm like, man, what, what are, what are you thinking? I mean, right. now, Grant, it's a tool. It can handle it, but, you know. God, treat it, treat it nice. That, that's, I don't know. That's me. Yeah, I mean, in the end, you know, take care of her. She'll take care of you, right? Oh, uh, indeed, indeed. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah, well, yeah, that's another podcast. So. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Uh, what's next? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, how about uh, leave it? Let's leave the field cleaner than before you were there. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. You know, shotgun shells are, are, are not biodegradable, okay? They, uh, they don't just magically wither into the earth and, and grow a, a little federal tree or a little Remington tree. <laughs> so pick That'd them. That'd be up. awesome. Yeah, it really would be. It really is. They, they are, they are brightly colored for a reason. Pick them up. Um, it just, you know, uh, but one of the big problems when we did a lot of hunting in, in Lubbock is, um, not another big problem rather, but one of the things the ranchers would always tell us, they say, Absolutely, young man. You can hunt our property, no problem. I'll pick your holes up is what they would say, and holes is another <laughs> word for shotgun shells. And the reason why they would say that is obviously they're they're ugly and not appealing to the land. But the the calves will eat them because you know the calves just aren't the baby cows just sometimes aren't the brightest. So no, it, again, you know I I'm real big on 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 keeping everything natural. Okay, I'm not some sort of hippie or anything like that, but. Uh, you know, I, I like it natural. Um, uh, and just picking your garbage up is, is a huge deal. You know, one, one little tip for you, if you want, if you're really getting into a firefight with the birds, you know, get a heavy duty garbage sack to put in the back of your truck or your, you know, your vehicle. Uh, and then when y'all are done with your shoot for the night or the morning, whatever it may be, empty your, empty your bags there, right then and there, you know, so you got everything in there. Um, I remember one of the things we used to do in Lubbock, and it was a lot of fun uh, until I, I had to clean it all up, but it was worth it. And I do it again. <laughs> as, you know, we hunted so much in Lubbock that we filled up the entire back of my truck with shotgun shells. Um, and, you know, we were – it was two-month season, you know, so we hunted a lot. Uh, we, we didn't fill up the whole thing, but we, we sure got close. And, uh, man, those those were the days. I have no doubt about that. Uh Ought to do to do that again, right? Oh go my here. goodness! Oh. <laughs> yeah, if you're in the Panhandle of Texas and you're listening to this, uh, and you are not dove hunting or you, you are not a dove hunter, you must start now. It is not <laughs> too late. Uh, Lubbock, the Panhandle of Texas in general, is just it is a dove mecca. Uh, it is it's just it is so much fun, and and I, uh, I, I I miss it. I, I sorely miss it. Uh, there you go, you uh, non-dove hunters out there. You've got your prescription. Absolutely. <laughs> Do it. Right. Uh, what about, uh, of course, if you have a great hunt, you know, you want to you want to document it, right, for posterity. Oh, yeah. oh a- absolutely. Absolutely. You know, there's, 
you know, the off season is, is a long time. Okay. And there's a lot of, of sitting around and, and doing nothing. Of course, we're, we're going to give you some tips on what you can do during the off season to keep your, uh, your hunting, um, desires, uh, keep them aflowing per se. Right. But, um, you know, taking pictures, putting them in a, in a picture album, whether it be electronically or, you know, actual film is a lot of fun. I mean, you can sit there and have a couple of cocktails and, and talk about your hunts. Uh, you know, also it's, it's, you know, kids love pictures. So here we go again, talking about children, you know, talk about a great way of, of getting them involved. Hey, and telling them stories. You know, if you can remember uh, something that I uh, should have done and I'm starting to do is when I print out my pictures, I'm writing a little story on the background mm-hmm. yeah. on, on the back of the picture, you know, that so that I can remember when I've uh, old and lost all my memory and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so, uh, yep. yep, it's never too late to start. Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, what else is there? I only got uh, one more on my list. Is, you got a couple more? Or? I I got one more on my list too. I think. Is, is it? Uh, the, how, what is the best way to cook stuff? <laughs> yep, well, I got one more after that. So that's oh, okay. Uh, you know, man, I I don't care. I'll just eat them raw. I <laughs> man, I I love dark meat. Okay, you know, I'm not a you know when it comes to the turkey, I'm an appendage guy. You know, if it was up to me, the turkey wouldn't be walking or flying home because, man, I love the legs and the wings, mm-hmm. right? Well, the the dove are real dark meat too, um, so I cut. I, I I love it. Um, one of the things that 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 we do here is we we do what's called dove Texas style, um, and it's a tradition that you know I grew up doing. It's just kind of down in the state of Texas, and it involves a uh, a, a dove breast, a toothpick, a piece of bacon, a uh, Texas ten fifteen onion from the valley. Of, uh, that's where we grow all of our onions. And then also, um, we, uh, put a jalapeno. Uh, that, those are the ingredients. And basically what you do is, is you get a, uh, a knife and you cut down either side of the breast. You put a little, little hunk of onion, a little hunk of jalapeno, wrap it up in a bacon jacket and, uh, stick it with a, a toothpick. Uh, do about 90 more of that. The same thing. Throw them on the grill. And, uh, you have your smoke alarm on, off, because it's gonna get smoky. Um, and you cook them up, and it's just, man, <laughs> it is, it is so good. Um, being, Jimmy and I went to, to Texas Tech, um, every year when we were, when we were in school, uh, we would either play University of Texas or Texas A&M was kind of our, obviously, they were two of our big rivals. Um, so depending on who we were playing at home that year, we would then cook up all of our dove. And so we would get, you know, all of our buddies around and we'd all kind of pool our dove. And, uh, Friday night we would, we'd stay around with, uh, you know, one or two adult beverages and, uh, we would sit there and prepare dove. Um, and I recall my fingers being wrinkly, uh, just from the jalapeno juice. Um, it was absolutely incredible, you know, and then we would fire up the smoker at tailgate at, you know, 7 a.m. in the morning for a six o'clock kickoff. Uh, Of course. And, um, then we would, uh, we would throw the birds on there as an appetizer and we'd throw, you know, 300 of them on there. And I swear to God to you, I mean, it took five hours to prep them and cook them and all that. It takes 20 minutes to finish them off. Uh, So, uh, but man, oh man, was it a lot of fun. And, and, and it was kind of funny. The, the amount of toothpicks left where you could build a little log cabin. Um, but God, it was fun. It was yeah. fun. And then naturally we would, uh, we would take the field uh, 10 hours later and, and destroy the enemy. So there you go. There you, you go. Know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and along the, yeah. Uh, and along those lines, we actually have a, a, a good blog, uh, kind of showing you how to do that, how to make those dove. If you go to feedbandit.com forward slash Texas style, that's feedbandit.com slash Texas style. Uh, that'll show you uh, kind of the steps to doing that if you're if you're new new to dove hunting and looking yep. for a way to eat them. So absolutely. So you and said if you, you had one. If you don't you want them, just mail them to me. There you I'll go. Yeah. Them. Well, well. Oh well. Actually, that's a good point. If you are doing, that, <laughs> or if you're just freezing them, you know, right. you want to freeze them oh. in water. Oh right? man. So. <laughs> yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, and ah, man, that's. Oof. 
Golly, that's a, that's a whole nother deal. But yeah, no, we'll, we'll, we'll hit it right now. One of them. Um, put, put, so putting dove and uh, putting dove breast, quail breast, pheasant breast, any, any breast, any meat really, okay, in, in a bag, uh, naked, okay, so without, uh, you know, without any saran wrap or foil, it, it's just going to end up in disaster. Um, if you're a hunter and you've been doing it long enough, you're also a professional food packer and processor. Um, and that's kind of what we, what we have, what we have come to do. Well, with, with the dove breast, typically what we do is we get a quart size, a Ziploc bag or a, um, a gallon size Ziploc bag. We'll put our appropriate amount of birds in there, which is hopefully a limit, which is 15 in the state of Texas. And then we will fill water up about halfway to make sure all the birds are submerged. And then we will stand them up in their freezer. Uh, and make sure that none of the, uh, the meat is, um, outside of the water. Basically what that does is that, that basically, uh, freezes it in a, uh, a nice watery cocoon of goodness. And, uh, I, I, I promise you the birds will taste better and they will last a heck of a lot longer. Uh, so that's definitely a, a, a tip. You know, freeze them in, uh, freeze them in water and they will last a heck of a lot longer and you won't have any freezer burn. Right, right. So, if, so if uh, if we get dove in the mail and they're not frozen in water, that's no. <laughs> right, right, right. Yes. Uh, you had? Did you have one more you wanted to talk about? Or yeah, I've that... got I've got one more. I've got okay. one more. And I, I think it's I think it's my it's real important. Um, it's called know thy target. Uh, right. and, and really, what this is 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 this is this is knowing what you're shooting at. Okay. Obviously, you know, the, 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 the morning dove, the, uh, white wing dove, uh, they're all migratory birds. Um, uh, and so, uh, obviously if you were to shoot something or go over the limit of that, or if you were to shoot, you know, for example, a mockingbird, which is the Texas state bird, uh, you will be looking at a very <laughs> sizable fine and uh, probably a lot of other miseries. So, so really, you've got to, you know, to again, it's, it's the same with any type of hunting. You know your quarry, know your prey, know what they look like. Okay, uh, there are several birds. Again, talking about state of Texas, that you know that they can definitely look like dove. One that's probably been mistaken more than than we know is is the killdeer. Mm-hmm. Uh, is literally the name of the bird. Um, they're a little shore bird. They love to hang around tanks in Texas. Uh, they, they make kind of a very unique sound, but when they're up in the air, oh gosh, I've had many a safety off on them. I've actually never killed one. Uh, but it, uh, actually, uh, George W. Bush, uh, senior killed one. And it's funny, the, the game warden actually gave him a ticket. Uh, that was a long time ago, but, uh, uh, anyway, yeah, know, know your target, and I'll tell you what, uh, there is no better place to, to start to familiar, to familiarize yourself with the flight patterns and styles of dove in the city. Uh, dove love the city. They love bird feeders. So, I mean, just go outside and spend 10 minutes looking up in the sky. You'll probably see one flying by. Yep, yep. So they have a very unique flight pattern, and, um, you know, once, you, once you've got it, you've got it. That is true. It just, just like anything, it just takes some practice to yep. get the, get to get the eye. <laughs> yep, absolutely. All right. So, uh, you got anything else, or? I think yeah. I'm good, my friend. Uh, good luck to everybody who's still dove hunting. If you've got pictures or, you know, our videos and stuff, we we'd love to see them. Obviously. Oh yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, you can sit, just go to and find our contact page and. Send us uh, some information or send us some pictures, and uh, maybe we'll post it on uh, Instagram or, or something, you know, if you want to get it further out there. Or you could just direct message us on Instagram. Of course, our sure. Instagram's Feed Bandit. So, right there, that'd probably be the easiest way to do it. All right. Well, <clears throat> again, that was a chock full of awesome stuff. So, yep. Uh, so you guys out there, you can find a lot of this material uh, at our blog, uh, feedbandit.com slash dove tips uh, if you're interested in reading a little more about the topic uh, and if you like what you're getting here and you want more and would like special access to new and innovative hunting gear uh, just a reminder join uh, join us join in the hunt at uh, feedbandit.com slash join we will also get our free ebook of interesting and unique uh, hunting tips and tricks again that's uh, feedbandit.com forward slash join 
And as a reminder to all the small businesses, feed stores, gear inventors, or entrepreneurs in the hunting space out there, if you'd like to get more exposure to potential customers by being featured on the Feed Bandit podcast, please let us know also. Go to feedbandit.com slash promote and drop us a line there. Uh, we'd love to discuss what we can do for you and your business. Again, that's feedbandit.com forward slash promote. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, thank you, Richard, for uh, another great, great podcast with great tips. Uh, and thanks, everyone out there. And remember, support your local feed store and have a good one.